Hello, hello, hello everyone. So, um, what you are seeing now is like a slightly nicer version of what we had yesterday for the small coverts on the Hayon. And today is kind of a catch up stream because I, I want to uh, show you like a, a slightly improved workflow compared to what we had yesterday. Because yesterday during the live, I realized that at some point, I think that some parts of the workflow were a bit naive. And I really want to uh, to show you an even better alternative. I fixed a couple of things in some of the nodes and I will show you now. Uh, so let's start with this. Yeah, let's hide the preview. And let's go to what we were doing with the small coverts, which is creating the surfaces for spawning the, uh, the, the roots of the feathers and also to have a wrapping surface. Um, so we go to object level first and we make the roots visible. What I'm doing here is slightly different from what I did yesterday because yesterday I was telling you um, the points coming from the um, scatter by rows node are coming with a p-scale, the other points are not coming with a p-scale, so let's delete the attribute um, in a way that um, all the tiny spheres here are copied with a standard size. But we don't have to do that, it's not really smart, because actually it's cool that we have these spheres becoming smaller and smaller to suggest the um, distribution of feathers that we are going to have on the wings. So we don't want to delete this useful attribute for, for preview, so what I did here is simply this. This object merge is importing all the uh, roots combined, the ones that are coming from uh, the, uh, the single lines, the single curves, and the ones coming from the surface. And then here with a simple wrangle, I'm putting a default value for all the points that didn't come with a p-scale attribute. So this is point three, just found by uh, attempts. And then this is the, the node I was using uh, before to assign a different color to um, each different, to every object that is coming from the object merge. So this way we have a preview with the spheres for the roots of the feathers. So now we can jump on the subnetwork we spent basically the whole previous uh, live stream on, which is this one. Let's make the object level visible in Ghost. And so with this setup, as we saw yesterday, you can go to this guide room, which is something we use to tweak the shape of the curves that uh, are generating the surface, um, the nav surface used to uh, compute the roots. And we can do all the tweaks we want on the surface. And we can look at the, the outcome uh, live, uh, with like a live update of the distribution. So this should be uh, quite handy for, for you to have a good control of what you're doing with this surface. Keep in mind that the distances between these segments are going to affect the distribution because these segments are going to be used for the nab surface. And that means that if I push the segments this way, I'm pushing also the, the spheres and the spawning points for, for the feathers. But this is quite useful actually because um, it, this way you can have like fine control on what you're doing, you can uh, fine tweak the density on the edge and, and, and so on. Jumping to the actual node that is generating the points, I did a really basic change on this node because 
Yesterday, we were trying to use an automatic um, uh, method to get the P scale from the density, but that was quite annoying, uh, as you could see in my stream, because every time that you are changing the distribution, that scale is changing uh, because it is automatically computed and that is not really useful because you you want to keep everything as procedural as possible you don't want to experience anything like i'm changing this value a bit and everything is changing in terms of sizes of shapes of the feather so what i did was quite uh, simple actually and i added two ramps for scale that's it you have a scale for the U direction and for the V. And this way you have a way more intuitive control of the sides of all these uh, points, depending on their position. You can control um, the, the sides with the V and with the U. With the U um, and V combined, you are uh, basically multiplying the values coming from each of the ramps and you are getting the final uh, the final look if you want to see what we are doing with feathers is something that we can see on the feather generator this is the feather generator this is before uh, the um, uh, wrapping the li the lift and the solver but just to show you so i pin the viewport here and this ramp is controlling the sides of the feathers. How is this attribute controlling the sides of the feather? The setup inside the feather generator is the same we saw yesterday, but easier to use uh, because now everything is controlled uh, with the ramps. So inside the feather generator, we are simply using the same snippet of code from yesterday, copying the P scale from the roots to the primitives, and then using the P scale with a set length that is assigning a feather scale um, coming from that attribute. And it's rescaling the curves that are going to generate the, uh, the feathers. Other minor uh, improvements on these um, god feathers scattered by rows um, consist of something I added for the behavior of these boundaries. Yesterday I showed you that these boundary ramps are helping you in selecting a specific portion of the nab surface this is the nab surface i'm going to show you this is the nab surface we are not using the whole surface but we are using just a portion with this boundary the boundary described by this ramp and this is useful to uh, tweak really quickly the distribution of the points but if you go here you see that we have a really high concentration of uh, roots and this is because basically regardless of this part of the nap surface being smaller still all the rows are going to be packed in less space so um, one of the options to avoid this if this is on the side sometimes you want something like this but if you don't want this uh, what you can do is what first option uh, the one i showed you yesterday the first option is that you create a bigger nab surface and then you are painting the prune attribute on the skin in a way that some of the roots will be pruned. Uh, but probably that is not as practical as the one I'm going to show you now. The one is quite simple actually, because you simply have to pick this side of the, of the ramp. This is the one uh, for the outer side of the wing and this way you are uh, compressing even more but if you go to one and you, you go above one the roots are falling outside of the surface in terms of parameters and this way you are reducing the amount of roots generated here 
So this is a, a good alternative. Now we are still seeing something outside because we need to reshape our curves if we want to stay in these boundaries. So we can go and do like this and like this. This way we are pruning the, the roots that we don't want to be there. So this is another alternative for you. Also, yesterday I was showing the other surface we need for the small coverts workflow, and it is the, the surface we create for wrapping. So the workflow is similar. You create a guide groom with some curves coming from uh, the, the mesh itself, and you keep adding curves and try to refine this shape as much as possible. You try to follow closely the edge of the wing and also, of course, to create a nice volume, a nice smooth volume over the wing. So the wing here is not really regular because, of course, it has all the anatomical details. And for your wrapping surface, you are going for something really smooth like this. Also, I was showing you that um, you might want to get a really accurate wrapping of the surface, sorry, wrapping of the surface over the edge of the wing. And I was doing this this way from the surface subdivided. I was using a ray node, a peak. Well, actually, I prefer to show you before the shape of the of the body. So this is the shape of the body. We starting with this surface. I'm using a ray node here, and then a peak, and then with a blend, I'm mixing this really closely wrapped shape with the rest. And this is something that I use with this snippet of code, which is basically mixing the shape coming from the first input and the shape coming from the second input using a blend attribute that is coming from the curve U. The curve U is something that it's on the surface and it's like this. I will show you with some color. So. Uh, but it's not here, actually. So let me check. Resample. Skin. Subdivide. I think that I, I'm missing something. No, the curve U is here. The skin. Oh, it's... Let me check. Yeah, the curve U attribute is there. Sometimes my viewport is not working exactly how I would expect. This is weird. Anyway, the attribute is there. I can show you using the, the visual debugger, the one for the viewport. Yeah, this is the attribute, it's here. I don't know, I, I wrote something wrong here. Sometimes, sometimes I get stuck in stuff that is quite stupid. Anyway, um, we know that the attribute is there and we are using the attribute to blend the, the two surfaces, the one that has been projected on the body and the one that, um, and the original one, basically. 
Okay, that's it. Uh, so uh, now, um, with this automatic uh, resizing of the feathers coming from the points, we are using guides that are all of the same size. It would be better for these guides to be already oriented um, the good way, so the wrap uh, process is not doing too much effort and is keeping the shapes uh, nicely. Uh, what else I did on this uh, on this scene? Let me reopen the scene so we get rid of any uh, change I might have done now. Okay. What I did in this group of feathers, the small coverts, is another tweak. Inside the feather generator, I wanted to add a wrangle, this one, and basically I'm using a really simple snippet of code to change the width automatically depending on the size of the feather. So what I'm doing in this network is that I have the guides coming from here, then they are all the same. They are, are being rescaled using the scale uh, coming automatically with the roots. Then there is some randomness here. Then I measure the length using a measure node. And depending on the length, I'm doing a small, I'm applying a small width tweak. Um, what I'm doing here is simply that depending on the length from a minimum amount, from a minimum value to a maximum value, I'm doing like a linear interpolation of this tweak for the width from minus 0.2 to plus 0.2. So what I achieve doing something like this is basically that longer feathers are narrower and shorter feathers are wider. Of course, I might have done this using the, the guides. And if you want to use the guides, you can do this. Of course, you can jump on these guides and make them wider. Uh, but we are trying at least at this stage of the, of the work to keep everything as procedural as possible. And uh, also because guides will always work. So if we need to fine tweak the look of the feathers in a specific spot, we are going to use the guides. So I will give you like a demonstration of what I was doing with this tweak. I will pin the viewport here. I jump inside the, the sub network. And if I bypass the width tweak, you see that all the feathers have the same relative width, but with the tweak, the longer feathers are going to be narrower and I can uh, make this even more extreme using these sliders. So now longer feathers are really narrow and shorter feathers are wide, uh, regardless uh, um, the, the, the fact that they are coming from the same guides. Um, so you can do any um, kind of uh, manipulation of these attributes in this subnetwork. This is the subnetwork you can access double clicking the feather generator. And this is an edit editable subnetwork where you have your guides, your skin. You can, of course, reference other, other elements, other nodes if you need them. In this case, we were referencing the roots. And you can do any sort of processing here. Um, you can tweak the width using an attribute um, uh, that you compute yourself. Like in this case, I computed a tweak with the length, but you can also use an attribute coming from the skin, or you can use an extra attribute you put on your guides. Um, so you are free of uh, doing this uh, in uh, many different ways. So this is how I achieved like a, a better looking now coverts because yesterday it wasn't really comfortable to work that way. And uh, basically with a really, at a really low cost, I can keep trying and trying and change uh, the density, the sides. I can 
um, uh, reshape my uh, my surfaces, uh, both the one I used for scatter the feathers and the one I used for wrapping the feathers. And after that, as always, as you know, we do the wrap really, really tight, the lift again really, really tight, and the solver is being used with really low values because of course um, uh, the solver what is how the, is the solver working the, the solver is going to create a small space um, for all the feathers that are intersecting with the neighbors uh, so if you are going to use the solver with a really high margin let's say that we are going to use the solver with a lift of 0 0.004 what we are going to get is something completely different. Let's click on solve. Now these are more than uh, 400 feathers. And as you can see, the solve did these why because every feather pushed the neighbor to get some space and after the deformation here with some uh, filtering of this effect you can filter like this to don't, not have a really broken shape but yeah this is not really useful of course you don't want to you don't want to do to do this unless you are creating some uh, effects on the body so try to use on the solver the minimum amount of lift you really need to clean this and um, always try to start from a good spot uh, with your uh, with your guides and yeah, this is it. Uh, basically, I could show you um, like an easier workflow for the small coverts, or at least for some aspects of the workflow of the small coverts, because the rest is the same stuff I show, uh, showed to you yesterday. And this is the current status of our uh, but let me see if I forget anything. Uh, I just wanted to show you that we have a mirror node. So inside my subnetwork Feather Geos, I created an object merge to gather all the outputs of all the Feather systems or of all the Feather grooms. And with the mirror, I'm simply creating the other side like this. In this moment, they are not all of them because I disabled uh, one entry. Let's grab all of them. Now they are um, complete. And with the mirror, we are mirroring our feathers um, on the spot. Of, of course, um, this is something useful for, for preview in a way that you can look at your character and it already looks kind of uh, complete while you're working, but Later, you will simply mirror your guides and you will create um, a different wing for left side and right side. Even if, you know, you might even uh, go on with perfectly mirrored feathers in some cases and trying to achieve um, the differences you want when you jump to the second part of the workflow, which is uh, Bob's um, generation. Uh, but anyway, this is up to you. It depends on your production, on how demanding is the, the character in your production. This is it. I don't think that I forgot anything. I, I really wanted to show you uh, a cleaned up version of the workflow from, from yesterday. We also achieved like kind of a nice uh, boundary here. But again, my suggestion from yesterday is to create a last row of coverts with maybe a different system where you are simply putting um, a single line of feathers and uh, you have higher control on that one. That's it. Uh, I will leave you with like the generation of the feather system and the 
the render of the current status of um, of the heron at the moment. Now we are dealing with a higher amount of feathers because yesterday we were having fun with the uh, with the coverts and we had like I don't know 150 coverts. Now they are way more. And also we are doing the other side of the bird. So at the moment, I don't know if you can read the status bar, uh, but we are generating more than 1000 feathers. And also we are generating fed feathers with fake barbules. And that's why in this moment uh, we are waiting longer compared to yesterday. Longer, but not insanely longer. We are waiting, a min we are going to wait a minute probably. And um, usually uh, you don't work on all the feathers at the same time. You, you split your groom in groups and you keep regenerating only the, the feather system you need, the one you're working on. The other ones are cached. Now the Bob's generation is complete and the, the feather system is finalizing with the nodes that are assigning the materials, that are subdividing. Uh, I think that I might get rid of um, some of these nodes because the ones that are assigning the materials are slowing down um, the, um, the the generation a bit and they are not really needed because in any serious workflow you will assign the materials somewhere else. Um, hello, hello to the chat. Um, so uh, these um, uh, these uh, live streams are recorded by, um, by Twitch. I can download them and I can re-upload them on, on YouTube. If um, you're not the first one telling me that he would prefer to watch these on uh, on YouTube, so I will do that. They are quite large. I have to upload like five gigabytes for the two hours live streams, but I will do it. Yes, so at the moment they are not available, uh, but they will. I, I will try to uh, to upload them regularly. So this is taking like an extra minute. I will definitely uh, remove uh, the nodes that are assigning the materials. But now when uh, feather generation will be complete, we will look at the render. Okay, complete now. Let's hide the geometries. And these are the feather um, coming from the feather systems with the barbs. If I zoom in, you will see why it was taking so long. <laughs> this is the detail of the of these feathers. I, I was playing a bit with uh, fake barbels today and I was trying to achieve uh, something nice. So we have fake barbels. You can see this structure um, between each barbs. Each barb, there, there are also two additional curves that are going to mimic uh, the barbules. And also all the curves that are going to mimic the barbules are slightly shorter. Um, so they don't look weird uh, on the edge of the feather. Uh, so yeah, this is what we did. Also, something that I will show you later. First, let's jump to the render. This is the render in Karma of what we have right now with the bird. And this is what I was telling you. Let's switch to this side of the graph. This is what I was telling you about assigning two different materials to the barbs and the barbules. So this is 
a solution I I spoke about um, several times for achieving a more realistic look. It is not okay for extreme close-ups, but I don't think that uh, there are many close-ups like this in um, in a film production. But it's going to improve a lot the look of feathers with, with proper look depth, of course, from this distance or this distance. In general, the, the look dev artist will have more things to leverage because he will be able to mix roughness, opacity and everything for these two different components of the, of the feathers. Also, the last thing I want to show, even if it's not really relevant to this part of the, the workflow, because now we are still working on the, on the wings, creating the geometries, but I know that people are curious about what you can do with the feathers, the, the, with the barbs, I mean. So this is a single feather, and this is what we have here. We have the barbs generation with the fake bubbles. Without the fake bubbles, it will look like this, plain curves. With the fake bubbles, it looks like this. And also you have here a slider to balance, to find the balance between the width of the, the core and the width of the, of the fake bubbles. And this can be used together with the look dev artist as well uh, to find the perfect balance and uh, the perfect um, uh, response to, to, to the lighting for your feathers. And also something that I wanted to show you because it, it is something new and it wasn't in the old Godfather videos is that if you need a custom uh, cross section for your spine, you can use this checkbox on the Reiki's Generation generator. So this is our stem, our quill, I mean. And uh, if we turn off use custom cross section, we are going to have a cylinder. But if we need a custom cross section, we can provide a cross section coming from here. In this case, I created a simple uh, square. And this way, we are having a different cross section. And this can be useful not only to achieve the shape you want, but can be useful to push the quill on one side of the feather. Because if you look at feather um, uh, closely, you will see that on one side you see a bit of the quill, uh, on the other side you have uh, more volume. So um, with the custom cross section, you can achieve that one as well. And something else which is important too, I start forgetting if I, forgetting if I already showed this to you, is that when you generate the bobs, you can achieve, you can create this gap in the middle. And this gap is controlled by the spine push attribute parameter. Uh, that can be used, of course, connected to other Godfather nodes. In this case, we are using a ramp, which has a similar shape to the ramp we used for, uh, for the quill. And then we are multiplying the ramp for a really small amount to, um, to have like uh, an adequate value for, for the scale of our feather. And this way, we are pushing away the barbs from the quill, from the center. And this is really important because this will prevent the curves, the barbs to crash in the middle of the feather, creating artifacts, uh, something that sometimes is forcing look dev to uh, make them transparent at the root. Um, but this way, you uh, should avoid most of your problems with uh, the artifacts. Um, occurring in the middle of the feathers. And also something I'm doing here, but again, we are jumping too, too, too far. I am connecting the feather length to the base width of the barbs. This way, smaller feathers have thinner barbs. Um, and you can tweak this behavior the way you want, if you want 
smaller feathers to have slightly thinner barbs. You can do that as well with a different uh, connection. That's it. Uh, I hope that uh, this update on the uh, on the um, small covers workflow has been useful to you. Uh, I really felt like uh, there were some some spots where we could improve from yesterday, so I did um, really quick tweaks to uh, to the notes involved, and I showed you again an updated uh, version of the workflow. Um, this is our wing so far. Um, I would like to 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 keep the live stream from from today really short, and we will go on with the character another day but yeah next thing we are going to do we will create the alulas we will create the coverts and uh, better we will just fine tweak the, sh um, the look of the coverts on this spot to connect nicely with the uh, primary coverts and to the alulas and then we still miss the, all the other side of the wings with the under coverts but you already know how we are going to do this. We are going to create the curves, the segments for the big undercovers. And then we will create another surface and a wrapping um, geometry for the uh, smaller undercovers of the wing. And that will um, complete our wings. And that means that, yeah, we will have a nice first pass for the geometries of the wings achieved in i don't know two three days four days um, probably this can be done even more efficiently also here i changed a bit the shape of um, of the secondaries uh, because i was looking uh, more closely to my references uh, but yes all the artistic work will come a bit later when we will have a nice procedural wing um, laid down on, on our scene. And then we, after the wings, we will go on creating the, the feathers on the body. Uh, I can anticipate you that probably what we will create will be a feather groom for the top of the body and one from the bottom, because sometimes it's a bit annoying to work with guides in this region where the orientation of the mesh is changing so so quick so probably we will have body top body bottom of course um, a feather groom for the tail then neck and head where we will go probably really high with um, with the number with the amount of feathers and then some groom for the legs and something i used to keep separated as well are the scapulars the scapulars are uh, as you know if you already uh, did feather grooming are the groups of feathers uh, that are coming from the scapula from the shoulder blade as um, uh, position on the on the body and they are like the connection between the body and the and the wings uh, so definitely for the scapulas, we will need to model nice wrapping surfaces that are going to uh, to connect with the shape coming from the wings. That's it. Uh, I hope that uh, this uh, small update was useful for you. Um, still, if you want to uh, get the grip of the small covers workflow, probably you will need to watch both the live stream from yesterday and this live stream from today as an integration. But if you are an experienced um, Houdini user, you already know how um, to uh, to build these kind of geometries like the wrapping surfaces uh, efficiently. And probably it will be enough for you to watch this live stream and um, and just have a look to the other one. I know that um, these live streams are appreciated. I'm really, I'm really glad that uh, people are watching them. I receive messages uh, quite often on Discord. I know that they are not like the ideal material for learning a new tool because they are too long. Um, but um, 
I really wanted to jump on a character really soon and at the same time showing uh, to show you how to use the tool. Um, proper tutorials will come. You know that they require um, more time because you have to record, to edit. Um, if you want to be more professional, you have to write down um, uh, some notes uh, or even like the whole text for what you want to uh, to say in the in the tutorial um, maybe i will use the footage coming from these live streams for the tutorials and slowly i will keep uh, creating them and adding them to to gumroad uh, so all the people who bought uh, the indie version of the tool of the studio version of the tool will be notified by email um, and the, an email will simply tell them that there is new material uh, to download. Um, but yeah, this will depend also on the feedback. If I will see that people are um, comfortable with the live streams, I will prioritize the live streams. And uh, But if people are requesting the tutorials, I will do my best to, uh, to go on with the tutorials. At the moment, you have only a single tutorial when you buy the Godfather toolkit and it's a tutorial that um, uh, explains you how, how to activate the product uh, with the license manager and that's it. Uh, but I need uh, to go on with those ones. Nice. Um, I hope that um, this has been useful and if any of you in the chat uh, has um, questions um, for this part of the workflow or even other questions, feel free to, to ask. Otherwise, yeah, we are going, all of us, we are going for dinner. Okay, yeah, I see that. At the moment, there are not many people watching, so probably there won't be questions, but I know that many of you are watching again these uh, streams in, in a different moment. So, um, thanks for watching. I uh, I hope you like uh, the uh, what we have in the viewport so far. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye-bye.